Welcome here at our next webinar at uh, JFT Bank and uh, have a good evening, I have to say. And um, I got already a couple of greetings here in the chat. Yeah, my name, uh, thank you for that. Uh, my name is Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for those kind of uh, webinars. And it's a pleasure for me to have you all here. If I look to the names, uh, it really looks quite international, but I have no idea how well, I am in estimating from the name to the country where you're coming from. Maybe you just write a line here in the chat um, about your home country. It looks a little bit like uh, UK, Spain, um, Italy, I think. Um, poo. Yeah, maybe Bulgarian. I'm not sure. So. But there are really a lot of names. Oh, yeah. So Spain was definitely not correct. <laughs> you hear me laughing. Um, but um, yeah, country wise, uh, it would be okay. But I, I have to admit, there is a special region. And uh, sorry for that. Uh, I think uh, you don't misunderstand me. So we, uh, the reason is uh, there's somebody writing, I'm a Catalan. So, uh, and that's not Spain. Okay, <laughs> good, good for that. Uh, anyhow, um, what's the date? Yeah, we have the 12th of uh, December, 2019, seven o'clock PM and um, yeah, trading the edge. That's the title of today. And honestly, um, the webinar is much more conceptual than you may expect. So finally, there's not a, a complete trading strategy at the end. Um, it's more conceptual in the way that we talk about edge and how to derive an edge and about a, a new concept for that. Um, you will see during the webinar. So, mm, Nevertheless, at the end, we will have already some hints about general rules for trading as well. But it's not a complete trading strategy. It's more um, the first step. And um, on the final page, you will find a sentence. There's more to come. Um, yeah, that's correct. But we need that preparation. Uh, and I hope you you like those kind of webinars as well. Um, not that many charts, um, a little bit more Excel sheets and investigations looking to the results, uh, which came out of uh, other computer programs. In this case, it's uh, C++ uh, doing the analysis because um, it's millions of trades and millions of uh, candles being investigated, drawing the right conclusions. Hopefully, let's see. So um, the slides for the, today's webinar, they are already available via the GoToWebinar control panel. And, um, and if you have later interest uh, in the shown Excel sheets, no problem. You see my email address. And uh, it's really with my complicated last name, s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com. So, um, and just call me Stefan. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's fair enough. Before I really start, you know, the procedure, I have always to show up once during a webinar, the so-called risk disclaimer, because we talk about trading, we talk about investments, trading strategies, entries, exits, things like that. <clears throat> but of course, finally, when it comes to your trading, you do everything on your own responsibility. I think it's quite self-explaining, but anyhow, it has to be mentioned uh, during a webinar at least once. Done. Let's look to the topics of today. So a little bit, um, I, I have to say it would be, or it is good, if you may have a look to the last webinar about trading and statistics, because uh, that was already, that gave us some hints that we need huge statistics in order to be reliable. And you find that uh, webinar on um, the JFD YouTube channel. That would be exactly the keywords to enter at Google. And then you will find the recordings of that webinar as well. The, the question about reliable, reliability and 
real probability advantages? Yeah, that's a quite important question when it comes to trading. And even that is not everything. As you know, uh, having an edge is not enough. We always need an edge, including costs, finally. So uh, even if we have an edge, so let's say we have a probability advantage of uh, 50.1%, um, no, uh, it will be not enough, uh, be sure, because there are additionally the costs of trading. So only if you would have something like that after costs, then it would be a profitable, um, a profitable trading strategy. And then we came to the conclusion, maybe. And the reason is, maybe our statistics is not good enough in, in terms of uh, we have not enough um, numbers, counts within our statistics. So for just for example, uh, if you would show me uh, a trading result, maybe from your own account with, let's say, 100 trades and those trades finally go north, I would do an analysis about your hit rate, your expectation value per trade. And finally, maybe I would have to admit, okay, good result, congratulations, but um, I don't know really whether that might be go on. Okay. We have no idea about the future at all uh, that we know. I think that's quite well known. But um, even from a point, from a statistical point of view, it, that kind of statistic might be not reliable enough. So that's the reason why I mention here reliable edges. And the new developed concept here is um, Finally, that we, we combine all the symbols. We investigate um, just the Forex universe simultaneously. And we do it stepwise. You will see the steps. And in, just in order to get better statistics. And I will illustrate what I'm talking and doing here uh, with a couple of indicators, trying to find out what kind of edge do we have within those indicators. OK. Um, I mentioned already last webinar, and therefore I have just uh, three lines here uh, about the findings of last webinar trading statistics. And the, 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 the maybe most important result is here in the first line. If I want to know the hit rate with a precision of plus or minus 2%, just from a statistical point of view, I would need 5,000 traits. Okay, I don't go further down how I derived uh, those uh, numbers and um, still it might be uh, just from, from a calculation point of view uh, that we say, okay, 4,000 would be enough already, but just to have an, a rough estimate. So 5,000, that order of magnitude. And I know that I, already that kind of statement is a little bit disappointing um, when we look to our trading results and our real life accounts. And even if they go north, um, it might be just an exception, so to say. So if you want to have real good measurement, in, and you know I'm a, a physician, so I talk about precision, I talk about measurements. Yeah, we would need for a measurement of plus minus 2%, we would need 5,000 trades. And now let's compare just with number of candles, if we look for historical data. And if you look for one year H1, so hourly candles, uh, then we would have 6,000 candles. And um, in most cases, my historical data, they start at 2,000 and four and therefore I have 15 years okay that would uh, multiply to 90,000 candles but now that's other candles think about any kind of trading strategy whatever the entry and exit rules are but let's let's assume we we trade every 24th candle since I'm talking about h1 that would be one trade a day okay then we would have, for the last 15 years, we would have 3,750 trades. Sounds like a huge number, but comparing to statistics, um, if we want to have 
the measurement for our hit weight was plus minus 2%, still not enough. That's our dilemma, so to say. And now I have a workaround. And the workaround is that we investigate that kind of edge of our trading strategy simultaneously, for example, for 28 forex pairs, because that will multiply the number of candles and the number of potential trades. And then we might have a good enough statistic. So we have enough trades being executed, uh, let's say via backtesting, and that is a little bit of workaround. But now we have a problem. Since the forex pairs, or if you look in detail to the to the pairs itself, they have totally different costs. Um, at JFD, okay, we have uh, always the same commission, but the spreads are widely widely spread it. So we have lots of different numbers, maybe 0.3 bips for euro US dollar, and maybe we have three bips for British pound and New Zealand dollar. So we cannot expect that every pair would can be treated the same. And therefore, we have another workaround. Let's see it for that. You, you may think, <clears throat> okay, uh, we, can, um, we can have much more candles. Uh, let's go down the road to M5 data or tick data. Uh, that then at least we have much more data points. But the question is, do we gain additional information? And my personal answer to that is, unfortunately, not. And I will not give you a real mathematical answer to that. I just want to illustrate that in a chart. So uh, let me jump to a chart. And now um, let's focus on two charts here. And that is uh, on the uh, right lower corner, Euro Swiss franc and Euro US dollar. And you see that I have drawn two lines uh, in both charts. And those two red lines, they have a distance of 100 um, points or 10 bips. And now let's assume that I typically trade with 0.01 lot. Okay. And then those two lines would reflect a one euro distance. Uh, it's not uh, really correct. Uh, that would be really one euro if euro Swiss franc would be pa parity, so not at 1.09. Same for US dollar, which is 1.11. But anyhow, so it would be a little bit less. Let's uh, still call it uh, um, one euro. So you see, we have here M5 candles, and sometimes it, it takes uh, 40 candles until we, we we reach out significantly from that one euro distance. So what do I mean with that? So if I would open a trade here at my current position of the cursor, or maybe 15 candles later here, it's still the same level. So if I would open trades with a fixed stop loss and a fixed take profit, and finally, those both trades would more or less behave the same. So there is no information gain with a lot of candles. That's different if you have, like today, um, we have um, interest rate uh, decisions, then, okay, there's much more moves uh, in the market. Then we leave the one euro distance line here um, yeah, on more or less short term. But anyhow, it doesn't really help to go down the road, uh, even to tick data, because if the price is not changing, we have still the same same situation. The only exception might be that you say, okay, the information I have here, if I don't leave that distance um, um, since 30 candles, okay, then I know uh, since uh, two and a half hours, uh, there is no new situation, but 
let's I don't know whether it's really a new information. Anyhow, that's the reason why just going down uh, time frames uh, doesn't really help. Okay, and the the real new Kant concept here is okay that we investigate forex pairs at, in a starting position simultaneously. And what I normally do is always I look for 28 forex pairs, and uh, that is simply uh, all combination you can build out of uh, those uh, eight currencies, uh, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, until US dollar. And um, yeah, that sums up to 28 uh, forex pairs, because we have only, let's say, one direction. We have Australian dollar, US dollar, and US dollar, Australian dollar, uh, first thing we cannot trade um, because that is not a valid symbol. Um, and on the other hand, it's nothing new. I mean, that's uh, just uh, the other way around. So one divided by the other uh, is always the same. So no, no, it would be nothing new. So there are 28 forex pairs. Final, finally, that is a concept. On the next slide, I will show you what we do today. So the starting point of any investigation in order to find edges will be that we do trades within those 28 forex pairs, but we will switch off the spread. And I still will use the commission. Why? Because the commission is the same for all symbols mentioned. Okay, but the spread, you know, is totally different for the different uh, symbols. So, but on the other hand, if we switch the spread off, then we have the same situation for all pairs. That's good. Now think about, we found something for a trading strategy, which works really well. Uh, without spreads, which is much more easy than um, with spreads, I know. But then we have behind us the statistics of 28 pairs. Wow, that is, so we can increase our statistics doing that kind of procedure. Then afterwards, in the second step, we will switch on the spread and we will look for the different forex pairs individually. The idea behind this, it might be that we have a good strategy, but only because maybe the spread for British pound New Zealand dollar is simply much higher than for Euro US dollar, the strategy might not work with that one. And believe me, costs of trading is more or less everything. So it's really important. And if they they are different for different forex pairs. We, we we have to include that finally. But from from the, the development of st uh, the, the trading strategy, we we could use even those British pound New Zealand uh, dollar trades. But then we have to equal all the trades. That means therefore we start without any spread, and that the spread is really that different. Uh, let me illustrate that as well, uh, going again here, and uh, now I need another um, uh, MT4. Uh, what you see here, because I'm always uh, logging all the spreads, um, just to know those numbers uh, quite well, even versus time. Um, and. I don't want to go into the details. That's, that's by the way, because I, yesterday in the German webinar, I got a question: um, how, what kind of indicator I'm using here? Because it's an indicator, and uh, the name of that indicator is ICE FX Spread Monitor, and uh, you can find that. Uh, with a Google uh, search, and you may include that in charts uh, at your own as well. If we just look for the, 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 the big number here, uh, then we see currently the Euro US dollar spread is 0 0.3 bips. And let's compare it with the number below, which is British pound um, Australian dollar. And you see we have 3.9 bips. So that's really a huge difference. And since costs are 
extremely important um, for, for our trading activities because we have only small edges and costs can ruin, ruin any trading strategy. It's not a surprise that maybe a quite well doing strategy on Euro, US dollar doesn't work on British pound, Australian dollar, simply because of the spread. Believe me, that is really extremely important. And we have done uh, those kind of calculations in other webinars, which uh, yeah demonstrate that kind of behavior quite well. So we have really quite different uh, spreads here. And uh, may, it might be that we have already now higher spreads on British pounds, uh, Forex pairs, simply because yeah, we have a special day, elections in United Kingdom and uh, yeah, maybe Maybe they will further increase. I don't know. Uh, let's see. So spreads are really different, but from from a development point of view, uh, we we can first start without spreads and later putting them back into the game. Good. That was the final concept. What I'm doing here today is a little bit different, and um, what what is a little bit different here today. And I do it simply because of, uh, let's call it didactical, oh, is that an English word? I don't know. F from education point of view, uh, it's a better way to start uh, a little bit different. And I start just still with the 28 uh, forex pairs, but I will guide you through the procedure. First thing is I will just investigate the hit rate. You know, the hit rate, so I, I even will not ask about trades in terms of how much profit or some something like that. No, we, we will open trades uh, um, in a simulation and uh, wait for example, um, uh, three candles. So we go three candles into the future. And if that trade would have been a long trade and if the price is above our entry price, then yeah, I call it a hit a, a positive trade. So I just ask, um, do, did we predict the sign of the trade or of that move correct? Yes or no. Um, next step is let's really look to the percentage move. So how much percentage of that price we would have as profit. And then in the next step, I will introduce, I will switch on the spread and the commission, but I will do it for all, not individual. I will do it for all in one step and let's see how much we will lose simply because of we switch on the spread for all. So that's different from the final concept. Um, but what I call the final concept is the one I further go down the road uh, simply. I'm already ongoing with developing strategies on that kind of concept, which is really quite promising, I can tell you. But now I want to talk about edges. So we need something as an additional input. And um, what we will investigate is simply the edge of different indicators. Um, okay, oh, there's a spelling error. No, anyhow, um, let me correct that. So oh, there's another one, my God, separately. So now we have it. Uh, so we will investigate different indicators because indicators might help us to find good trades. As always, you may have indicators in your chart as well. But now let's go for what kind of indicators we will investigate. Um, so let's start with that one here. Um, with a list of different indicators I'm investigating and show results for that. And I will start with the rate of change, the ROC. Um, sometimes that uh, indicator is also called, called uh, momentum. And it's simply the question, if we look back 10 candles, then we have a percentage move between 10 candles back and close price of last candle. And that is simply the rate of change. So it's a more or less the, the, the quite easy indicator, but it will tell us already a lot of things. 
I will always do things here in percent. Simple reason. We have Euro um, Japanese Yen and we have Euro US dollar and other pairs, but they have totally different base prices. So we should do everything in percent, of course. And all those indicators have a period, like my example, uh, what was my number? Anyhow, and let's say I look back uh, 24 candles, then that the period in H1 would be 24. We might look 50 candles back or 100 candles back or only one candle back. So any indicator has always um, one degree of freedom and that's its period. So we will look for different periods of those indicators. Other indicators I investigate is, for example, regression percent. That's quite simple. If you look for the price and for the last 100 candles, you can fit a regression line into z that uh, points. And those, that regression line has a slope. And yeah, that slope might be a, a good indicator as well. Or we go for the distance to a given EMA. So if you would have an EMA uh, 15 and then the actual price has a percentage distance to that EMA and that might be a good hint for a good indicator as well. Slope EMA, quite easy once again. It's the same EMA but now we measure the slope. And finally I have an indicator which I personally call range position and uh, let me illustrate uh, that indicator uh, because I don't have it in MT4 but uh, in my, my uh, when I compute everything I can of course do it and let me uh, go here in that chart and what I do for example uh, range position uh, for at, let's, let's say one to uh, about 10 candles. Uh, what it means is I would draw two lines here, 10 candles back. Within those 10, 10 candles back, I would uh, draw a line for the maximum. I would draw a line for the minimum. And now I have a position within that range. So if I would be exactly at the upper limit, it would be one, I call it 100% at the lower end, 0%. So I have simply a number between zero and 100. And that is uh, what I call a uh, range position. So the idea behind, so I look a certain numbers of candles backwards. And maybe if I'm already at the edge, at the 100 or the zero level, so I'm close to, maybe breaking out and that might be a good edge for trades as well. So, but up to now, everything is a question mark. But now we need something else. We have num so we can have historical data for 28 forex pairs and we have those kind of indicators, but we, we want to group them, not the indicators, but the values. So let me explain what I really mean. So for a given indicator, with a given period, um, we can have, we, we, we have uh, thousands of different numbers. Okay. And now we, we will create a histogram out of that in order to group them. You will, in a minute, show, uh, I will show you exactly what I mean. And then I hope uh, everything will come clear. Uh, in order to have less data, I will do the illustration on Euro US dollar D1 uh, simply because I don't want to have 90,000 uh, values. I have only uh, about 4,000 values. But just to illustrate uh, what I mean with that histogram and grouping those, those values, we have here the price data um, of uh, Euro US dollar, the different candles, and I have created the rate of change 24. Okay, that means I have here simply the difference between that close price, 24 candles backwards, divided by the actual close price. And anyhow, if I would divide by this number or that number, it, mathematically it's, it's different, of course, but uh, 
from from our grouping perspective, it will have not such a huge impact. So that's um, one indicator rate of change for a given period, 24 uh, values calculated. And now here is already the graph um, of those different indicators. One side remark here, um, because we immediately can see something like the overall volatility here. And um, you see that financial crisis, we have uh, huge bars here. And as we speak, the last couple of weeks and months, hmm, only small values. Um, that's the reason why trading is a little bit more difficult uh, in uh, the last couple of days and months and weeks. Uh, but anyhow, so that's the rate of change. But now what I can do is I can take all those values, mark them, and I will go for another sheet and I will copy them here uh, just as they are. And then the next will be I order all those numbers in ascending order. Okay, here we have them. And I, now I can plot them. Uh, I will do. And then I will explain what's in uh, the other graph. So here we have all those values. And that kind of graph I personally call a pseudo histogram. Um, normally those histograms are bell shaped uh, curves and of course they are um, and would be for, for uh, that example as well um, so what we can see already we have only a few extreme values because here we have all the values and here the values itself um, and we have lots of values in the range around zero and if I would really draw a histogram, uh, it would be, become more clear, but uh, that would take a time. But what I've now been doing is simply, I put out those values and that is already prepared here. If you see what I've done, uh, the first one goes for the, the lowest value uh, within our complete um, 4,000 different values. Okay, that's the lower end of that group. And now you see equals A about 430. What does it mean? Um, here we have about 4,300 different values. And I want to have 10 groups. And therefore, my group with 430 values ends here. That means if I look for the range, a rate of change 24 indicator, my extreme group to the left with very low numbers is between minus 0.17 and minus 0.036. And then the next group goes until here, here, and so on and so forth. So the good thing is, within one group, I have always the same number of members, same number of days or values. So every group here contains 400, about 430 numbers. And those are the ones I'm later interested in. Meaning, I want to find out something like, okay, if I have an indicator value in the extreme left, so highly negative values. Does it mean something for the future? Can I derive any any anything out of that? And therefore I group them. In this case, I have done the exercise here for 10 groups. Uh, later um, in my other investigations, it will be um, 30, yeah, 30, 31 different groups. But remember already, they are just labeled from left to the right. And we have on the left hand side always the highly negative or low numbers. And on the right hand side, we have the high numbers. If we, for example, would think about power candles, yeah, that's exactly something like that. So we have 
430 candles, which are extremely, not candles in this case, it's a rate of change, extremely short candles, and those are the extremely uh, long candles, or rate of change values, better to say here. That grouping is necessary because then we can investigate uh, those groups separately, and that's exactly what we are doing. So we know how to group, we know how to class them, to classify those. What I have finally done is, I took those 28 forex pairs with those 90,000 uh, candles, and 28 of that make, makes 2.5 2 uh, million. And I've done the same kind of exercise, but not in Excel. Uh, um, I've done this in C++ in order to get those groups, and now coming to the edges. Okay, but that is when I talk about groups, when I talk about classes, that's how I derive them. And what kind of indicator you use for that? Yeah, you can use not really every indicator. For example, the EMA itself would not fit into that scheme because the EMA is just a value like the price. Um, so we, we, we mean anything which is relative. And therefore, I decided, hey, I go for those five uh, indicators because those, those five indicators I can can um, do in percent. And therefore, I can exp uh, compare or even uh, totally different forex symbols. Good. And now let's go for the real searching for edges. Let me guide you through this. And on a first view, it looks uh, crazy. A long, long Excel sheets. But you will uh, completely understand what's in with those Excel sheets. And, um, and let me start with the different rows, because in a second, you will see the edge. First column is the indicator itself, so rate of change, good. Then there's a column which is called future candles. What does it mean, future candles for me is, so I want to start here with the hit rate. I introduced already the hit rate, just looking, hey, was it a positive or a negative move? Okay, but I have to ask how many candles I look into the future. One candle, two candles, four candles, and I do it simply always with a factor of two, uh, and I end up uh, with 128 candles going looking into the future, which would mean 120 is exactly one week. So we, we, we have a history, and then we ask how those what gain we have in a certain future. Then we have a feature number. You may better think about the indicator period. Therefore, I wrote it down here. And the different indicator periods I invest, have been investigating have been one, two, four, and so on and so forth. So think about rate of change. That means here we used the rate of change one, meaning just one candle, one hour one hour back and looking for that percentage um, change. Then, you know, we have done this, the grouping, and now we can come to the hit rates for the different groups. Here, you might think still one, two, but not up to 10, like in the last Excel sheet, but now I have uh, 30 groups here. And you see already a nice number sitting here. 0.54. Let's think about what does it mean. It means we have a group which is highly negative, so on the left-hand side. So we have a rate of changes which are extremely negative because that's this group in column H. And if we now look one candle into the future, we have a hit rate of 55%. What is it telling us? It means, so we have highly negative one candle backwards, 
But if we now would have, a, let's assume uh, we, we would think about going north, that's exactly with a probability of 54%. Hey, that is already quite huge edge of 4%. And that's really good. Let's look for just one row here. And I will plot it. And then you will see the overall behavior. What is the chart telling me? Okay, group number one, we saw already that 54. Let's go on to the other side. Uh, group number 31. Remember, 31, that is the group on the very right-hand side. And there we have indicator values which are extremely positive with high numbers. So we we have huge, for because it's uh, the, the rate of change of the period of one, we have one hour backwards, we have a huge jump to the north. And now we have 46 here, or a little bit more. That is telling us for a long trade, it's 46. Uh, that would mean, on the other hand, we should go short. So we would have a, a very good hit with a short trade. Cool. And if you look for the values in between, yeah, they are really creating, let's say, an order. Um, so if we don't have a change in the one hour history, we don't have a clear edge in the one or the other direction. It's a little bit like you might have assumed, but what you can see or draw first conclusion, counter trade is exactly what we would go for. Okay, that's just one row. Finally, let me uh, shortly explain what means uh, ups hit rate here. It simply assumes, okay, if we know we, on, on the right hand side here for those values, we should go uh, short. Um, if we know that, we can simply change the sign and then we can add all those hit rates, and therefore I call uh, it the absolute hit rate. What is now the next column? Uh, the next row. Next row is simply a different indicator. So still we look one candle into the future, but we go for a rate of change two, which means we go look back two hours, four hours, and so on and so forth. And you can see. Mm, the longer we look into the history, the numbers for a one hour forward um, edge, they go down. Okay, it's not that surprisingly, but we can see that quite clear here. And now I will only just go here until the first rate of change border. Um, so only those values, and I will plot that column up to here. Because then we can see already quite a lot. This overall behavior that always left-hand side, lower group numbers have high values above 50%, and on the other hand, we, we um, no, not on the other hand, um, and sorry, I have to restart my sentence. Sorry for that. So the longer the period we we look backwards, then always it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But since we I plotted just the very left group, all the values are above fifty percent. So whatever indicator period I use and whatever future candles I will use. The final statement here is always the same. We should go for counter trade. That's cool. That's already quite a good statement what we can do. And now, I, you, as you remember, further down here, we have all the other indicators, regression percent, range percent, and so on and so forth. Let me just put a plot here and we can ask um, 
now we look for all the different indicators um, with always different uh, periods and future candles. And you can already see what is the best candidate. Hey, here we have the highest numbers at all. Uh, that is the third indicator I investigated. And you can do similar things by your own. And uh, as I mentioned, you can have those data. What is the third indicator? Range position. Wow. That's just the hit rate. And as you know, the hit rate is not everything. We have to go to the next step. Let's go, let's have a view on the percentage change. And now, overall, same thing here. Nothing really different, but the values here are now, I call them expectation value, not anymore hit rate. What does it mean? So we have an average, we go one candle into the future, uh, with the indicator rate of change one. And now we see that if you would go, let's think about uh, well, what is a move, the average move we can find is 0.01%. That's not a lot. Um, so that's the average move we can find for the very left border uh, group. Let me plot everything because then you can see we can get better numbers. We can, within one indicator, that is up until um, a future candles, um, 128, which is one week into the future. So if we only look quite short into the future, of course, we cannot get that high profits or high percentage changes that's yeah we can understand because within one hour into looking into the future there's no big change as always but nevertheless we see that uh, almost everything is positive so once again it reflects that counter trades are the one which are uh, the best. If you look quite far into the future, and far means 128 candles, we can really get some higher average percentage values as being the expectation value. And we, what I plotted here has been just all the, um, the left group. Maybe you can think about what is exactly on the other side. If I plot the very right end group. Now, everything should be more or less negative, almost. And you see, indeed it is. So once again, we see that the more we, the, the more far we look into the future, uh, then we get higher values. That's always this kind of behavior. There's one special indicator, regression line, sometimes really showing up here with positive numbers. But overall, hey, um, it works. All the numbers are more or less negative, And so the longer we look into the future, the more far we look into the future, the higher is the average um, expectation value. But now negative. Okay, no problem for us. We can uh, we can go for short rates. So if the history has been extremely positive in terms of price changes, the future is more probably to be negative. So going south, and that being done as an investigation on 2.5 million candles. Wow. So that's really a huge statistics behind. And now we can even go further and I will jump because time is passing here. Um, already uh, not percent with spread, I go directly, I will jump to real trades. Real trades means I have switched on commission, I have switched on um, spreads, and as you can see in the name of the Excel sheet, I have opened 
always low trades. Good. So normally we expect positive numbers um, for the very left group. And you see already, hmm, they are negative. What does it mean? Okay, that might be because here we look only one candle into the future, two candles into the future, and we saw already that we don't have that much move within one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. So we maybe we need some more hours. Only then we can compensate the costs. Although we have an edge, we need we need enough edge to compensate um, the costs of trading. Okay, then let me go down here. Um, until 128 and plot those values and then picture becomes clear okay if we would trade all those candles belonging to group number zero which means we have those um, extremely low values for uh, the indicator rate of change our expectation value now in euros is always negative here for a few future candles but if you wait long enough like 128 candles hey we have an expectation value and that's euro uh, that's really high so we can use that kind of information for in future to be developed um, trading strategy that's really good because now we know not only that we have an edge, even if I include the cost of trading, hey, then we have um, still positive values. And although what I've not done here yet now is I have investigated the individual forex pairs individually. So that's still not done within the Excel sheet. And then we will find even better results because um, there might be forex pairs which are still not um, delivering us uh, positive values here, simply because, for example, spreads are too high and uh, we cannot compensate the cost of trading. So then the, the remaining average would be even higher. So that can be done just by investigating all the pairs simultaneously. And what you can see here, um, this is one I'm looking forward 128 uh, candles, 40, uh, 64. Here we have 32, and here we have 16 candles. So it means we need a minimum trade duration of 16 candles, which is about uh, one day. And um, yeah. So we should not go for trades which are um, which have a too short period of time or too short uh, trade duration. So we need minimum 16 hours in order to really get that kind of edge. It's good to keep that in mind. So we should not look for trading strategies which have an average trade duration of minutes or just one, two, three hours. That should be too short. The conclusion is not that there does not exist such a trading strategy which works, but looking just from the perspective of those kind of different indicators, um, it doesn't look promising. Let's. Um, uh, we phrase it that way. And if you look for all the different indicators, now I plot the complete column, you see a similar behavior for almost any indicator going always for, for enough future candles. We really get that kind of edge. So there's one indicator, um, and that is now once again range position. It's not doing that well uh, for that kind of analysis, but all the others. Uh, are really doing a quite good job here. And as mentioned, it's always counter trade. If we now in this long table look to 
to the other side here, we should not be surprised that more or less everything is negative because that's simply not the right group for going long. If I would plot exactly the same for the short table when I investigated all those short trades, we should find something positive once again. Indeed, we are. Good to know. So that's good. So we know that, that we can find not only edges, we can even transform them or we can, can use those kind of edges in order to get really good um, profitable trading let me call it not already trading strategies because it's not already a complete strategy because I don't have stop losses. I have lost just looking that many candles into the future. So it's not a real trading strategy, but the concept works and it will even be better. I can promise you if we would do that kind of final analysis after already, after we have found the edge that we then go for the individual um, spreads for the individual forex pairs. And then we simply would see, okay, maybe British found New Zealand dollar is not a good idea. But still, you will US dollar is. So, um, because it might be ruined simply because of costs of trading. So, let me, let me, show you on one slide the findings, just doing that kind of statistical investigation here. And I think we can draw those kind of conclusions like the used indicators here, they really provide an edge, not only for hit rate, even finally, uh, including costs. Very good to know. What we realized as well is the extreme situations you remember the border groups the, on the very left and the, the very right side. They always have the best results. So we, we always should focus on extreme situations. Good to know. So when there's nothing in the market, we have just wriggling around of the prices. It's not a good I to, idea to, to open any trade. But after we have things, huge moves in one direction, for all those kind of indicators, they, they, they would um, go up or extremely down. Um, we, we find good situations. What we realize as well is that always counter, counter trades is the message really going reverse to the previous move. That is the preferred direction. It's not a surprise for me. Well, maybe for you, I don't know, maybe not, but now we have it for sure. And even when we take into account the costs, then we realize something which even good to know as well. Our typical trade duration should be not too small. Otherwise, we, we are lost in the noise. We are lost under the costs of trading. So we, we need a little bit of time because only then um, we, we have big enough moves to compensate all what is costs. The good thing is that all those statements are based on 2.5 million candles. So that's really something I would call statistics. And um, it's not some rules um, based on 100 candles or 100 trades. No, 2.5 millions. So remember my, my first uh, slide was measuring the precision by plus minus 2%. We need 5,000 trades. Okay, now we have 2.5 million trades being investigated um, in order to draw those kinds of conclusions. So that's real statistics. Of course, next step is real trading strategies based on some additional rules like stop loss, stop loss distance, take profits, for example, whatever. But that's the next step. Okay, 
I hope you are not that disappointed, but we have already some quite cool conclusions. So we can use that kind of approach, deriving edges by simultaneously investigate the complete Forex universe. And the results we, um, we have seen are already quite promising. And even I have not applied any real trading strategy like no stop loss and take profit, uh, we can already conclude some important rules, especially that about how long a trade should be about. But there's more to come um, and it's extremely promising, I can tell you. And uh, stay tuned, hopefully, and uh, uh, we'll show results. Uh, and now the next message next year. Simple reason. Um, next week, I start on a vacation over Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. We go to Vietnam. Uh, maybe I have a, a listener here, participant out of Vietnam. I'm not sure. Uh, doesn't look from the names, but anyhow. So that's the destination for the holidays. And we have new webinars next year. But I hope you enjoyed today. Webinar, and if you have interest in those Excel sheets or slides, okay, then slides could be already downloaded. But anyhow, then just drop me a note at s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com, and I will make sure that you will get those uh, quite immediate. But if you want, write me today or tomorrow, otherwise, it would be too late because then I'm on vacation. That's for now. Um, have a good evening and uh, enjoy your time and see you hopefully back next year thanks bye bye